Hi. So when I was um, at my grandma's house, when I was a lot younger, um, she asked me once, oh, would you make me a sandwich, love? And I uh, was really happy because I love doing things for people. And I love the idea of um, being able to make food for somebody and feed somebody. And any, any kind of like service I could do to make somebody feel cared for. So I excitedly went to the kitchen and then um, <laughs> no idea where to start. Like I didn't know that I needed a breadboard and I didn't know um, that there's such a thing as a bread bin and then if I look in it, that's where I'll find the bread. And I didn't know that you're supposed to like get some spread and spread it and what filling to put in. So actually uh, this, there's a word for this kind of knowledge, but I can never remember it. I learned it, ages, I mean, I used to hear it ages ago. It's like, you know, the kind of um, information that you know about something without being told it explicitly. It's just something, something knowledge. Can't remember what, what it is. And I don't usually have that. And it's like a dyspraxia trait, I think. So, um, I must have had to keep going to and fro and asking her, like, and she was probably rolling her eyes up to the sky and wondering how I could get to this point in life and not know these things. And then, uh, <laughs> as well, once I've made it, it was, I'm pretty sure I got um, criticised for not putting the butter to the edges because I learned that lesson. I've always, ever since then, make sure I butter right to the edges of the bread. And what you get in this part of the world as well is um, if you've not put enough butter on, then you get, um, what have you put it on with? A red hot poker and this kind of uh, constructive criticism. Um, so, uh, yeah, I must have ended up with some kind of sandwich, but I can remember the kind of pitiful look I would have had from my grandma when I presented her with this final product. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I definitely tried my best because the thing is, uh, I'm very conscientious and I try so hard with everything. But it takes a lot of um, sort of practice for me to um, get the hang of something. And with the instance of sandwiches, that must have probably been 20 years ago or maybe even more. But I learned how to make sandwiches in the last two years, and I think I perfected it now. And with dyspraxia, it's sort of having to do something because someone's telling you, you need to do this thing at nine o'clock. I mean, this might not be all dyspraxics, this is my experience. Or it could be um, a social pressure for that because um, my daughter needs sandwiches now for various reasons and it needs to be ready so that we can set out for school. So I've got a deadline. I love deadlines. And I've, I'd spent um, a year or two watching uh, my friend. So when she made the sandwich, it was like, mm, I saw when she would do it, how long it would take her and what it looks like when it's done. And it kind of gives me a standard of like, right, if I can achieve that, then that's good enough and that's gonna go in the lunchbox. And then when I started doing it, it was like, uh, takes me a long time because there's a lot of steps. You might not think so, but as a dyspraxic, there's a lot of steps in making a sandwich. And there's a lot of complications with it. Like the fact that you don't just get one piece of bread and butter it, you're gonna have to at some point but to the other slice of bread as well. And those kind of things are like <laughs> very complicated to me uh, at the point when I didn't know how to make a sandwich. <sighs> and there's no sort of right and wrong with a sandwich that I can follow, like, mm, which would help me to be more confident. Like, um, this is exactly what you use. This is exactly how much of it you put in. And this is exactly how you cut it. And without that kind of precision, I just uh, do it wrong. <laughs> Anything could go wrong with that sandwich. I mean, I do still, I still get it wrong because sometimes I make the children the sandwich, but it's like, it, it's, 
if they try and pick it up, then the other piece will fall off because what I've done is I've put sauce on one side, but not the other. And then it didn't stick together because I was, I don't know what happens in my brain, but it's kind of like, I think, well, I've put sauce on that side and I've put the filling, so that must be enough. So then just close it, but it hasn't worked. So I need to be like more um, thorough with the fillings. Um, so, um, I, yeah, one more point, which is just that I am not saying that might um, people might tend to think this means that I or we as dyspraxics are not practical, but I am. A lot of us, that's not connected. A lot of us can be very practical and I am very practical and I am very good at doing things with my hands and I um, just need to do something again and again and again and again and again and again. So instead of taking me like an hour to actually complete the sandwich because I keep wandering off and forgetting what I'm supposed to do next, it, it's something that I can actually just get done within five minutes and the sandwich is perfect. Thank you.